Hello everyone. Welcome to Pratidwani. This is a new podcast on uh, reflections of uh, academic scientist. So I write blog uh, in the name of Scatterings and uh, I have been doing this for several years now but slowly now I am making a transition to uh, podcast and uh, this is my first kind of uh, episode which I am creating. So uh, in several Indian languages uh, including Kannada, Marathi, Sanskrit, Hindi and many more the word uh, pratidwani means uh, echo or uh, reverberation so the idea is through this podcast i intend to reflect on my thoughts as an academic scientist on some topics uh, related to science technology history and philosophy of science so do um, listen to my podcast and let me know what you think about it so before we move into some of the topics which i want to discuss today Uh, let me first introduce myself uh, for people who are not aware of my background uh, my uh, job is uh, uh, as as a professor at uh, department of physics in uh, indian institute of science education and research pune so i have been uh, a professor here uh, since uh, last 13 years i joined in 2010 so my research interest uh, is in creating and probing uh, out of equilibrium soft matter system using light um so i explore the interface of uh, optics and s- soft matter physics and uh, various different topics like light scattering optical forces optical trapping nanophotonics brownian motion and pattern formation and several other things fascinate me as as a researcher So by training I am an experimental physicist but uh, over the years I have also developed deep interest in uh, theoretical questions related to uh, some of the topics I just mentioned now as an extension of the uh, my own research uh, I have been deeply interested in exploring topics in uh, history and philosophy of science and part of the reason why I started blogging was to emphasize on these aspects of science So the main motivation is to somehow humanize science and bring the human element into uh, whatever I have been doing uh, over the several years. So that is the background uh, and uh, something which is very fascinating to me is uh, to look at uh, the way people do science and uh, what new things we can learn from doing science and also importantly how humans have been performing science as a and as an endeavor and uh, there is a deep history and philosophy which is connected to uh, to the way people do science and uh, this always fascinates me and uh, part of the reason i am doing the podcast is also to bring that human element where uh, one can have a human connection uh, between let's say a scientist and a person who is interested in science need not be just a student it can be anybody right uh because uh, science is something which is universal so to speak and it is important for us to uh, communicate science uh, uh irrespective of uh, what is the uh, what is the status of a person what is the background of a person science does play an important role this brings uh, to an important topic which i have been always thinking uh, over over several uh, years now is uh, is the question uh, is science elitist do people think uh, people who do science are somebody who, uh, who 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 are very kind of secluded from the from the general public and uh, is there some kind of a segregation between people who think deeply about science and the the normal uh, lay person in my opinion and also in my own experience uh, i have found that uh, scientists to be not only people who are deeply thinking about science but they are also people who are deeply thinking thinking about society and uh, people who have various different interests who have very interesting human characteristics apart from the fact that they actually are deeply thinking about scientific and technological problems so this is something which is very very important uh for us to really appreciate that scientists are not just people who do only science but there is also a, a very interesting dimension to each and every person who is a, who is a scientist scientist by the way need not be always just a professor 
or like an academic scientist like me even a child is a scientist anybody who is curious is essentially a scientist but uh, developing that curiosity m- kind of maintaining that particular curiosity and uh, perceiving that over over several years is what is very very important if you want to become let's say a mature scientist um, as a function of uh, time now as i mentioned uh, the reason why i am uh, creating this pratidwani which is the podcast is to kind of bring in the human element of uh, doing science and uh, also discuss some very interesting aspects of history and philosophy related to science and this is something central to a lot of things what i do and uh, it also keeps me motivated to do science uh, not only in terms of the deep intellectual problems which we are thinking at the boundaries of let's say two different areas of uh, physics for example in my own case uh, optics and soft matter physics but there are also f- several of my colleagues and various different people who are very deep thinkers it is important that people know about them in in significant detail and appreciate that scientists play such an important role in in developing a society the other reason why i want to create this podcast pratidwani is to bring in a, an element which is slightly more f- reflective a lot of science and the discussion around science about science especially in in the media is most of the time western centric uh, what does that mean that means that uh, there's a lot of interesting science which is go- science and technology which is going on in 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 western countries and also many developed countries so majority of the voices from the scientific community generally come from these countries but uh, there is also quite a lot of r- interesting science and technology which is developed and pursued in in various different countries which may not be categorized as uh, developed countries take for example india india has had a very great tradition of science and also some very interesting technologies but uh, those things actually need a little bit more attention within the public domain of let's say india or global south so to speak so this particular podcast uh, probably also makes an attempt to to bring in that uh, that viewpoint which need not be western centric although i do have great appreciation of western science and the western centric uh, viewpoint and also the lot of things which happen in in various different countries having uh, had part of my own uh, training as postdoctoral researcher in europe and uh, usa i do value a lot on the way people do work in such countries and uh, such continents but there is something missing from an indian viewpoint so hopefully this particular podcast will fill that particular gap and also if you look at the most of the podcasts uh, which actually are within india and especially in the domain of uh, academic aspects it is slightly more tilted towards social sciences um which is very very interesting and fantastic but what is really lacking is something little bit more kind of s- scientifically oriented which actually has a tilt of science plus something where science becomes the central point in in the discussion so hopefully this particular um, podcast will fill that gap to make sure that uh, we are able to bring in something slightly different from whatever is existing uh, um, existing uh, in in the current domain okay so uh, i'm going to discuss now a, a little bit about my own experiences um as as an academic scientist in india so as i mentioned uh, i am a professor at uh, indian institute of science education and research pune which is in the western part of india a beautiful city beautiful people a lot of interesting things uh, and also it's a it's also a great environment in which uh, uh, one can do science and think little deeply about various different things what we do so it's been 13 years almost exactly 13 years because i joined uh, i said pune in the month of may so over those these 13 years i have guided about 11 phd students who have already got their phd's and 11 master thesis students mainly in physics 
and i have also interacted with several undergraduate students being an academic uh, scientist one will have to not only do research but also teach and that is one of the central parts of uh, uh, of of the responsibilities of being a faculty member in in an institute like uh, iiscr pune and uh, that actually is very motivating for me because i i really enjoy not only doing research but also kind of you know uh, kind of helping out students to understand uh the world through the lens of uh, science which itself is a fascinating uh, uh, thing so over the years i have been actually mentoring students for phd uh, kind of uh, kind of research and also uh, i i have been regularly teaching uh, various different courses so some of the courses which i have been regularly teaching is let's say advanced laboratory in physics and uh, optics both from a classical and a quantum mechanics uh, viewpoint and it has been very enriching experience for me um, uh, doing doing this particular thing so what is important uh, is the realization that uh, central to all this is people in india generally speaking uh, the infrastructure is always an issue especially when it comes to experimental research but uh, over these years i have found that uh, that people are probably more important than than uh, than the infrastructure uh one should always consider that infrastructure is very critical i am not denying that at all in fact if anything uh, being an experimental physicist i know how important uh, having an infrastructure is but between the infrastructure and the people if you are really forced to choose one thing i would still choose people because having good people around you is extremely important uh, to develop a program and that really actually has a kind of you know deep consequence on the way uh, we we work and uh, function so other aspect of doing in, uh, research in india i have uh, kind of uh, understood the importance of um, having a constant and moderate approach to doing work see when you do research a lot of things actually are long term ish meaning um, many of the problems what you actually are trying to address are uh, are spread over several months or sometimes even years so therefore one will have to actually take a slightly long term approach so i keep telling my students that um, that that doing research uh, is like running a marathon it is not a very short sprint but it is a, an effort over a very kind of a long period of time and generally it is a very enriching and satisfying uh, kind of um, kind of an experience so uh, having this kind of constancy and moderation also is a great approach to think about problems deeply and also take things uh, one at a time and try to understand them in detail and then go to the next step and try to solve the solve the problem in a systematic way i know having a long period of time to solve an important problem is a, is always a tricky thing but somehow this 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 kind of slowness is also equally important while doing research otherwise everything becomes a short termish goal and um, that is not a conducive thing uh, when it comes to research uh, it's better to actually take a long term view of the problems and also make deep connections with other fields and uh, other phenomena as much as this particular approach plays a critical role a similar emphasis should also be given in communicating science so when i tell communicating science it's not about just doing outreach activities but as an integral part of thinking writing and talking are very very important so what it means is that uh, you are essentially taking an extent um, a kind of an external articulation as an approach to express your thoughts which means that you are really thinking hard about something and in the process of expressing that particular th thought you would actually understand something this is a very fascinating phenomena and i i, I also keep uh, kind of interacting and uh, telling this to my students that in the process of expressing a particular thought 
you might actually construct the thought in a better way uh, this is the power of writing and to a large extent even conversing and conversation need not be only in english by the way yeah? because i have uh, had the uh, several students from various different parts of india and uh, they tend to actually speak in their own mother tongue be it hindi bengali or uh, any any other language and i've seen that uh, their understanding really develops when they interact about some particular problem in their own language because they would actually have nuances and specific kind of expressions which might be slightly more deeper than let's say a language which you have learned uh, uh in as, as in english uh, which need not be the main language in which the education is done for several students but i have found that uh, this this uh, prospect of writing and talking is central to doing research and therefore i always uh, emphasize uh, this particular thing india being a country where uh, most of us talk at least two languages or even more than two languages this is an important aspect because expressing uh, expressing uh, the scientific thought in various different languages is much more easier through speech than in writing and uh, that's one of the reason why i'm actually doing podcast by the way because my own mother tongue is kannada i also have some kind of background in sanskrit and of course hindi is something which i have also been uh, educated uh, right from the beginning and um, of course i lived in spain so i picked up a little bit of spanish but i i am i am no more conversant in that particular language but i find that um, not only uh, having english as the main language of uh, expression but if you also kind of speak other languages that has a very interesting uh, implication and i find it uh, very fascinating um, so to speak so in that sense writing and talking is is very important now coming to the emphasis on history and philosophy of science uh, this is one of the fascinating topics which i am deeply interested in and i also found that um, if you one is exposed to good amount of uh, history about your own topic in which you do research th- this has tremendous uh, kind of uh, benefit because you get a slightly broader context and that broad context is is uh, very important uh, there's a very beautiful article by uh, steven weinberg uh, where he talks about four golden lessons and in there he emphasizes the importance of um, of of knowing the history about uh, behind the topic in which you are working on so i'm going to actually give the reference in in the blog uh, and do have a look at it it's it's a, an excellent article for any student or for that matter any researcher who would want to actually understand uh, why history is important and other important aspect is uh, history gives you a very broad context and also it gives you a very specific view point not just only on the problem at hand but the evolution of the problem over several years and uh, this i think is is something which is uh, very very fascinating now um, when you are an academic scientist in in institution like uh, iiscr or iits generally we have a reasonable amount of teaching in my case uh, roughly it is like 25% of my time i spend uh, in in teaching uh, again it depends on uh, on various different people at least i spend about 25 of percent of my time on teaching and i have found that uh, teaching actually is one of the most satisfying jobs uh, uh, one can really have especially uh, if you also kind of uh, bring in the research component into the teaching and also over the years i have found that um, it is one of the most important social responsibilities as an academic scientist not just in india anywhere in the world for that matter because uh, science itself is a beautiful thing and helping other people to understand science is also an important thing the impact one one can have on shaping thoughts of of uh, looking at things and phenomena from a scientific viewpoint is an extremely enriching and extremely powerful way of uh, looking at the universe and the way to perceive the things around us so i have found that um, uh, teaching actually really helps you to not only understand what you are doing 
but also in the process of teaching somebody you are sharing your knowledge and uh, you see that uh, people take that particular knowledge and develop it in their own way and that's the beauty about uh, teaching because you actually kind of offer a particular branch of knowledge to a person a student the student consumes that particular knowledge but takes it in a different direction and most of the time the kind of pathway a teacher gives uh, to the student need not be the same path that the student takes in its in his or her future and this is a very fascinating thing and this is also uh, a, a reflection of the fact that uh, the branches of knowledge are plenty because uh, a teacher can anticipate only one aspect of how the knowledge is applied but by kind of communicating that knowledge to more people one would be able to actually percolate that knowledge in various different directions and this i think has a very deep consequence on the human kind of evolution uh, both in terms of the thoughts and also in terms of the ideas one actually can develop say say take for example um, the concept of so called stimulated emission which is one of the very important concepts einstein's a and b coefficients was a celebrated a and b coefficients actually hypothesized about this particular thing they gave specific kind of expressions but it turned out to have very deep implications on lasers lasers by the way are light am uh, uh, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation which probably everyone of us have heard of it and used it and seen it lasers are central to a lot of technological applications what we have now but the concept of lasers themselves actually began uh, as a very kind of a, a specific and narrow idea in understanding light matter interaction so hopefully in the process of this particular uh, podcast in 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 uh, weeks to come i would be able to highlight such kind of uh, deep connections as we go further and this also gives you a, a reason to teach and uh, i would have not developed all these interests but for the fact that uh, i have to teach these concepts to to my students and i'm always fascinated to know how they actually understand things and what they think about the problem now uh, if you are also uh, a, an academic scientist you will also have to have various different hobbies and various different pathways in which you can actually uh, kind of spend your time and uh, one of the very fascinating aspects uh, of being uh, on campus in a beautiful uh, place like uh, pune especially in iser pune is that uh, you develop an interest in sports in arts and uh, other kind of activities this is a very important thing because um, science sports and arts can can actually come together to form an important trinity and uh, in, a, in in development of a good human health not only in terms of uh, mental but also the physical health uh, bringing these three things together is extremely important and uh, it has such a deep implication that uh, they actually positively feed uh, uh, onto the each other and uh, will uh, will play a significant role in the development of any human being so any any research scientist any student or any kind of person involved in doing some kind of deep work needs a very important channel to express that not only in terms of science but also arts sports and other pathways and that's one of the reasons why many of the residential campuses across uh, india actually have reasonably a good uh, sports facility you know it's very very important to have student culture where sports arts etc actually are really uh central to uh, to the exchange of uh, uh, ideas among the students and to for that matter faculty members or staff members within the institution now um, all these aspects uh cannot be uh, kind of realized without a good communication between let's say the place in which a science and technology is done or pursued or studied and an outside world so there are various different ways in which one can interface with the outside world and uh, in my opinion social media can really play a significant role in doing this 
uh, why i say that is because of the fact that uh, for a country like india wh- whose size and diversity is so rich uh, that uh, one will have to have a specific kind of communication channel which actually can percolate not only to urban pockets but also to deep rural pockets within within india there is tremendous interest in science there's a lot of interest in science not just among children and adults within the urban india but uh, people even in rural india have deep deep kind of understanding and also appreciation of how uh, scientific thinking can play an interesting role in a very different way they need not be articulating the concepts and thoughts only from let's say an academic view point but there are f- quite a lot of people who have reasonable understanding that science has an implication and 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 uh, efficient efficient kind of impact on their life take for that matter the example of vaccination it's uh, it's one of the important uh, things which has gained a lot of interest in in recent times mainly because of the fact that covid pandemic was was uh, was, was such a uh, uh, kind of a big thing because uh, in india even though a lot of people might not be highly educated but they have a deep understanding that scientific process and scientific thinking is is there and uh, they also trust that particular thought process and this is a very important responsibility thrust on on scientists like us because uh, there's a reasonably large kind of proportion of the country which still has has a trust in 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 scientific uh, thought process which is very heartening uh, so to speak uh, but that is a, that is an important thing what we have to do if we have to really uh, kind of take it further uh, uh, in in future so therefore uh, so, uh, social media will play an important role going further and importantly social media can also be used to communicate in multiple languages and that is one of the important aspects in fact one of my goals is also to bring in some other languages which i am conversant in into the communication process of uh, kind of taking science forward and also communicating that um, uh, for for various different audience and that would be uh, a, an important aspect the other thing which i would like to emphasize is the importance of mathematical thinking and uh, this is something which also has gained a lot of interest not only in india but also in in countries like uh, united kingdom especially in england uh so thinking uh, statistical thinking mathematical thinking is is an extremely important thing i'm not saying this only because of the fact that i'm a physicist where phys- in where mathematics is central to a lot of understanding in physics but also generally speaking one can really get a beautiful view of the universe if we have a slight bent uh, uh, in terms of mathematical uh, way of thinking and it is an extremely important and i've been vastly kind of you know motivated by people like steven strogatz and uh, other people who have really been able to not only do cutting edge research but also communicate the importance of mathematics to people who may not be mathematicians uh, but who are still deeply interested in mathematics all the way from student level to to academics and uh, therefore mathematics will play an important role going further uh, for human development now um, an interesting aspect of doing research in india is also that uh, professors sometimes or many a times uh, have to actually also work like a postdoc at least in my personal capacity um, i tend to actually consider myself not as a professor but as a student uh, especially the role of a postdoc is a very interesting kind of a role one can take because most of the time uh, uh, in indian uh, research labs uh, one would not be able to hire and uh, kind of retain postdocs for a very long period of time and therefore a professor uh, uh, she or he has to actually double uh, as as a postdoc who can closely work with the students and also take up some responsibilities of doing their own experiments and other things uh, the lockdown period was one of the very interesting times uh, uh, where uh, 
I was alone in the lab. So I was actually doing my own experiments and uh, it was a very interesting time because I could revisit some of the things what I was doing as a PhD student. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, it's a very kind of an interesting kind yeah, experience one can get if uh, professors don't see themselves as something who are detached from the lab, but as an integral part of doing work uh, within the lab and inside the lab. And this is something I really, really am, am interested. Now, coming to the part of uh, self-motivation, I, I draw a lot of motivation from several people, especially who have, who have been doing research in India, various different people uh, who have played a very critical role over the years. And uh, there are so many inspirations. For example, I really uh, admire people uh, uh, from the past like uh, Moksha Gundam Vishweshwaraya, who played a, such an important role uh, of bringing technology to, to, to the human world uh, within India, but also his ideas were so mature and uh, so broad. I also really, you know, admire people like uh, Gagandeep Kang, who really played a, such a fantastic role uh, in, in, in the vaccination process and also communicates so elegantly and so beautifully um, uh, with, with, uh, on various different platforms, including Twitter and other platforms. Really, really uh, fantastic people to get motivated from. And of course, there are many, many scientists. And hopefully, um, in this podcast, I would highlight some of the people whom I have read about and I have uh, kind of researched about and uh, whose histories and biographies actually are equally fascinating uh, aspect. So uh, finally, what I would want to emphasize is that uh, Pratidwani, which is this particular podcast, is essentially a kind of a platform. Uh, and by the way, it is a non-commercial platform. So I would urge you to share whatever I actually am sharing with you, the listener. So this is done purely out of my own interest. So I am uh, just looking at uh, the prospect of knowledge spread across various different kind of communities. Uh, my main goal is to humanize science. You know, that is an important part of it. And I would also give a lot of references uh, as part of my uh, podcast within my blog. So I would actually link uh, several references uh, and uh, some notes which are uh, equally important for, for the listener. Uh, please, uh, please have a look at it as you go further. Um, I would also want to go in depth into some of the topics which are of, uh, of interest to me in research. So uh, I would probably take up some particular topic and go a slightly in, a, in slightly insignificant detail to give you an overview of uh, some, some interesting prospects in, in, uh, in, in the research areas. Uh, equally, I'm interested in uh, understanding how science and technology can solve global problems. For example, climate change and pollution control are two things I'm, I'm really, really interested in. And hopefully this podcast will give some kind of a, a platform for me to communicate with you. And uh, most importantly, as time progresses, I would want to also make this podcast conversational, meaning I hope to also talk to a few people and bring them to this particular podcast uh, and have some discussion on important topics, uh, mainly from a scientific viewpoint, which might actually be of uh, general interest. But that's something I'm uh, still thinking and uh, hopefully I'll be able to evolve this. So to, to conclude this post, uh, uh, podcast, uh, I would want to recite uh, a very important and a very interesting kind of a, uh, a poem, uh, which is uh, in Kannada. Uh, one of the interesting aspects of code podcast is you can switch from one language to another uh, if you are conversant in this. And one of the uh, m very fascinating kind of uh, kind of philosophical poetry uh, written by a, a very famous Kannada poet, uh, uh, which you probably would be aware of, uh, is the uh, great Mankuti Manakaga by DVG, which is DV Gundapa. So here it goes. ಹುಲ್ಲಾಗು ಬೆಟ್ಟದಡಿ ಮನೆಗೆ ಮಲ್ಲಿಗೆಯಾಗು ಕಲ್ಲಾಗು ಕಷ್ಟಗಳ ಮಳೆ ಕಲ್ಲಾಗು ಕಷ್ಟಗಳ ಮಳೆಯ ವಿಧಿ ಸುರಿಯೇ ಬೆಲ್ಲ ಸಕ್ಕರೆಯಾಗು ದೀನ ದುರ್ಬಲರಿಂಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲದರೊಳಗೊಂದಾಗು ಮಂಕುತಿ
so the meaning of this is that uh, be the grass at the foot of the mountains be blossom to the home uh, be the rock to the reckon when the fate throws you into troubles and be the sweet savior to the needy and the downtrodden and finally be one with everyone and uh, that is the philosophical meaning of this particular po- poem it tells you that you have to actually become one in in in, in everything and uh, science gives you a great platform to become one in everything so this is uh, my podcast pratidwani i would request you to actually uh, share this particular podcast with interested people and uh, also please give me your feedback i am on twitter i am on uh, facebook and uh, i also actually am reachable through the email which is present on my website so please do contact me and give me your feedback i hope to kind of take your feedback and learn new things and improve upon that and uh, finally the important aspect is that pratidwani's main aim is to humanize science i want science to become more reachable to uh, to everybody and uh, uh, and uh, that uh, would be a, a reasonable goal to work towards so until next time bye bye